hello again so we're going to finish off tonight with um a controversial subject really i'm going to talk very briefly about a an indian player called uh mulvan tri himantial mankad vinu mankad who was uh, an indian all-rounder right-handed batter slow left arm he played for india in 44 test matches and scored 2000 runs and took 162 wickets a little known fact about this guy uh vinu mankad is that he batted in test matches in all 11 positions right through opened all the way to number 11. That's a bit of a strange thing. At the time when he finished playing, there was, he was one of only three players who'd done it. So he got a lot of runs, got a lot of wickets, <coughs> excuse me, and played a lot of cricket. Uh, he was born just be, uh, in the First World War, 1917, and he died in 1978, so he's only 61. Uh, that's not what he's famous for, though. What he is famous for is... In the 1947-48 tour of Australia, um, in one of the earlier tour matches, um, he broke delivery stride and ran the non-striker out, Bill Brown. Uh, and that became known as man -cutting. We're all familiar with that. It's not against the laws of cricket, but it is against the spirit of cricket, some would argue. Uh, and then when they play the test match, in that same tour, uh, he did it to the same guy again. <laughs> so that's gonna that's gonna give some bad feeling, isn't it? So one guy's been done twice because he's backing up, and um, it needs to be watching, really, doesn't it? That that's the thing. Um, Don Bradman, in his autobiography, said, and I quote this. For the life of me, I can't understand why the press have questioned his sportsmanship. The laws of cricket make it quite clear that the non-striker must keep within his ground until the ball has been delivered. If not, why is there provision there which enables the bowler to run him out? By backing up far too early, the non-striker is very obviously gaining an unfair advantage. So Don Bradman in favour of man -cutting. It is perfectly legal, by convention, this should be a warning. That's what people say. Now, I would say this. If a batsman runs, hits the ball and runs up the centre of the wicket, uh, the umpires will warn that batsman. And the warning then applies to the whole of the team afterwards. Uh, and if anyone else does it, it's five penalty runs. So I would contest that if if a bowler warns a batsman, say the number three batsman, stops and warns him, you know, if you do that again, I'm going to run you out, that then surely should apply to the rest of the team. I think that's fair. So if, for example, the number three batsman is warned and then... An hour later, the number seven batsman is out of his ground. I think the bowler is within his rights, um, ethically for me, to just take him off and not warn him. It's like a run out. I mean, if a bowler runs in and bowls a no ball, he doesn't get warned that next time it's going to be a no ball. It's a no ball. Uh, and as you're a batsman at the non-striker's end, what have you? What else have you got on your mind? Don't drag your bat out. How hard is it? How thick are you? Do you know? Um, oh my God! If I drag my bat out, I'm going to get run out. Yeah, best not. Best just wait till the ball's gone. What advantage can you gain? How stupid do you have to be to be run out with a man card? Um. I'm pretty firm on this. 
I think it's fair game. And I think it's fair to run people out. You don't need to involve the umpires apart from is it out or is it not out. It's not the umpire's place to decide whether it's sportsmanlike or it's not sportsmanlike or it's ethical. It's not that. No, it's a line call. It's a line call. Uh, what I will say to you is, if you're going to do it, one warning in the innings, I think, for me, is fair. So if you warn the opener and then an hour and a half later, the number 10 does it, just run him out. Just run him out. How's that one? Thanks very much. Cheers for coming. Thank you. Uh, it won't be happening to us because we're going to be looking at where we're dragging our bat. So just be a bit wary. That's my thoughts on man cutting. Controversial, I know. I know you're going to put some comments here. When I put this on Facebook, it's going to be going all night. That's why I've left it till 10 to 9 to post this. Uh, but it is a Monday, so it's not 10 to 9 on Friday. Uh, and the pubs aren't open. So it's not going to get too uh, too wild. But please put your thoughts below about man cutting. I don't mind it. Um, I mean, you could say the same about a a wicket keeper who takes the ball and waits to see if the striker steps out of his ground, then takes the bails off. It's the same. You're out of your ground. You're out of your ground. And you're out of your ground, and and you're out of your ground. You're out. Uh, that's just my thoughts on it. But I think one warning should last. You should do the one warning, and that lasts for the whole innings completely happy with that thanks for listening guys